Today is the Feast of the Apostle St. Bartholomew, and in the Gospel reading we have the mention of Nathaniel, and it's believed by some that Nathaniel and Bartholomew are the same person. Uh, very often the, the apostles had two different names, their Jewish name and, and their, their, their Greek name or, or the, the Gentile name. So um, anyways, notice how our Lord says of him, you know, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit, or in some translations, no guile. In other words, he's a very, very honest man. He, there's no trickery about him. There's no deception. He says the truth as it is. And this is how we are called to proclaim the faith, as it really is. We are called to proclaim the truth. And we are called to be good examples to others. And part of that is being honest. When you know someone is an honest person, you can trust that person whether they talk about politics or, or religion. So being honest is an important quality to have. I also wanted to draw your attention to today's first reading from the book of Revelation. Now notice it, it begins by talking about one of the angels with this uh, seven bowls of the seven last plagues. And what is this referring to? Well, uh, you know, it's been pointed out that the book of Revelation is kind of cyclical. In other words, it could apply to many different ages, but it certainly applies to the end times. And so near the end times, there, there will be talks about natural catastrophes, but also plagues of various sorts. And whether this, these plagues are kind of like what we think of, you know, like viruses or bacterial plagues, that's possible. But it, we could also be plagued with spiritual ailments, horrible spiritual attacks. And, you know, especially the age in which we live in, the influence of the media, the influence of society, and the corruption of governments and their promotion of all kinds of horrible things, especially in regards to how it affects young children. But uh, part of the reason I, I brought this to your attention is because we recall that passage of our Lord where he says, uh, if the time of his coming had not been shortened, no one would be saved. So in other words, the corruption of the world will be so great that we'll enter even within the church, even within the hierarchy of the church. And, you know, the, 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 um, the passage that we heard from the book of Revelation goes on to talk about the bride of the Lamb, which is the church, the new Jerusalem, coming out of heaven. And it's beautiful. It's described like a beautiful jewel. Now, this, of course, refers to all the saints who are already in heaven. Now, we are all part of the church, but it's, it's the, the ones who have, who have conquered sin, who have conquered evils, who have ascended, in a sense, to heaven. In other words, they have attained their place in heaven. They are the, the fullest brides of Christ. We too are brides of Christ, and it's important that we realize that. So Christ provides for us, he guides us, and he does this primarily through the church. But, but I wanted to draw your attention to the 12 gates, and the names of the 12 tribes of, of Israel are inscribed upon the gates. And there's three gates in the east, three gates in the west, three gates in the north, three gates in the south, and others implying that the message goes out in every direction to all peoples. And as you know, the Israelites, the Jewish people, they are all descendants from the 12 tribes of Israel. In other words, the 12 uh, brothers who were the sons of uh, Jacob. So in a similar way, the church is founded on the 12 apostles. We are not biological descendants, but spiritual descendants of the 12 apostles. And then it actually goes on. So it talks about the 12 gates and having the names of the 12 apostles there. But it also mentions that the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them are the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So, of course, the, the foundation for Christianity is Christ. But... The apostles are also a kind of foundation. Certainly St. Peter, the papacy, definitely. But all the 12 apostles. And what does this remind us of? So it reminds us of 
the fact that what the apostles taught, they were basically conveying what Christ taught to them. So in other words, we must preserve the apostolic tradition, the apostolic teaching taught by the early apostles. And it also reminds us of the apostolic succession, so that the successors to the apostles are our bishops, but we are all associated with the 12 apostles. We have this connection to them. And, you know, especially in the first Eucharistic prayer, which ideally, you know, on a feast like today is the prayer that we should um, recite. It mentions the apostles. It mentions the early popes. It mentions the early martyrs, indicating that we are united with them. We have the same faith that they have. And you see, this is very, very important to understand in the end times. Why? Because as I mentioned, the corruption of the world is entering into the church, even within the hierarchy. So very gradually, very slowly, the traditions of our faith are being watered down, being corrupted, and there, there will be attempts even to change those apostolic traditions and even the dogmas of the church. So we need to be aware of this because you see what's going to happen and when these things begin to happen, people will say, oh, well, the church is just like the rest of the world. The church is just as, as politically correct as the west, rest of the world. So why belong to the church? Why go to the church? You know, interestingly enough, just um, Recently, we had the Feast of St. John Youths, and I happened to watch a video um, presentation by Father Ripperger. Um, he's a, an exorcist in the United States. He's a very good speaker. But it, he made a very interesting comment, which I wanted to relate to the plagues uh, of the, uh, the angels in the book of Revelation. And he said the worst punishment, St. John Youths made the statement that the worst punishment that the faithful can receive is to have bad priests. The worst punishment that God can confer on the faithful is to have bad priests. So there's a saying that we get what we deserve. So why would this be the worst punishment? You know, when we think of punishment or chastisement, we think of natural catastrophes, you know, earthquakes and all kinds of horrible things, or we think of physical persecution, you know, being attacked, being martyred. But the worst punishment is having bad priests. Why? Because a bad priest will lead you astray. Or even if they don't lead you astray, even if they don't corrupt the faith and teach error, often they don't proclaim the truth. They don't talk about morality. They don't talk about what is sinful. They don't warn the faithful to avoid certain sins or certain things that are wrong. They don't inspire the faithful to speak out against evil in society. And so what happens? Well, the laity become lax and they just accept the things of this world. And they don't proclaim, they don't promote the kingdom of heaven here on earth. And so souls are lost. And this is why this is the greatest chastisement, the greatest punishment conceivable to have bad priests. And the reality is there are many bad priests. In fact, there are many bad bishops in the church today. And, and this ought to cause us great, great, great concern. So we need to look to the apostles. We need to look to St. Bartholomew. We need to ask St. Bartholomew and all the apostles to intercede on our behalf. But these pillars that I spoke about, the, the apostolic pillars, it all, it's also a reminder to us that we must carry on that apostolic tradition. An apostle is one who is sent. And every faithful, every member of the laity is sent by God into this world. We all have a mission. We all have a purpose to share the faith with those around us. And yes, let us pray that there will be good priests who are not afraid to proclaim the truth.